the first question is does a change in consumers tastes lead to a movement along the demand curve or a shift in the demand curve that's the first part of the question the second says does a change in price lead to a movement along the demand curve or a shift in the demand curve so this question has two parts the first part uh, asks us whether change in consumer tastes lead to a movement or a shift in the demand curve so remember that this is the demand curve here we have price here we have quantity all right so movement along the demand curve would be movement from this point to maybe this point a to b this is called a movement but a shift would be this is the demand curve quantity price shift would be a shift upward or downward shift so this could be demand one demand two demand zero so this is a shift and that one is a move so in this case a change in consumer taste lead to a movement along or a shift the answer of this question is it will lead to a shift in the demand curve the second part is does a change in price lead to a movement along the demand curve of a shift the a change in price always leads to a movement along the demand curve so here uh, the price has changed from p1 to p2 this is just a movement along the demand curve but in this case uh, in the case of consumer taste the demand curve will either shift upward or downward all right so i hope this one is clear movement versus shifts now let's move on to another question Popeye's income declines and as a result he buys more spinach is spinach an inferior or a normal good that's important part of the question that is the question mainly what happens to Popeye's demand curve for spinach so remember there are two type of goods normal and inferior For normal goods, demand increases when income, which is denoted by Y, increases. And for inferior goods, demand decreases as income of someone, oh, sorry, income increases. So here, demand and income has, has they have positive relationship. But in inferior goods case, the relationship is negative. That is, demand is decreasing and income is increasing. So this is a negative relationship. But in this case, in the case of normal goods, they are moving together. Positive relationship. So in the, uh, the question, Popeye's income declines and as a result, he buys more spinach. So there is a negative relationship in this question because uh, Popeye's income is declining, decreasing, but his demand for spinach is increasing. So Popeye, uh, for Popeye, spinach is an, is an inferior good. So is spinach an inferior or normal good? It's an inferior good. The second part is what happens to Popeye's demand curve for spinach. So his demand for spinach has increased, right? So the demand curve in this case, this is demand one, will shift upward this will be demand two so for spinach the demand will shift upward from d1 to d2 so that's uh, the second part of the question all right all right so let's discuss the third question Consider, consider the markets for DVD movies, TV screens, and tickets at movie theaters. For each pair, identify whether they are complements or substitutes. So, uh, sorry. 
The important part of this question is whether the goods are complements or substitutes. So the first part says DVDs and TV screens. So before we go into the question, uh, let me remind you complements and substitutes. Complements are the goods that are used together and substitutes are goods that are that you can uh, instead of using one you can use the other one so for example complements could be car and petrol because they are used together and substitutes could be coca-cola and pepsi so if you if coca-cola becomes expensive you can purchase pepsi those are substitutes so complements are used together substitutes are used interchangeably uh, all right so let's discuss the question DVDs and TV screens, they're used together, right? Because when you use the DVDs, you have to plug in the DVD player in TV screens. So these are complements. DVDs and movie tickets. So when you go to a movie, uh, you're not watching a movie on DVD. So uh, you have two options. Either you watch a movie on a DVD or purchase a movie ticket and go to the cinema. So in this case, these are substitutes. They're not used together. TV screens and movie tickets. So TV screens and movie tickets are also substitutes because they are not used together. When you purchase the movie tickets, you go to the cinema and when you uh, use the TV screens, you, uh, you don't need to go to the cinema or uh, a movie ticket. They are substitutes like Coca-Cola and Pepsi. I hope, uh, I hope the concept of complements and substitutes is also clear to you now. Another question, uh, this is, this is uh, the question on shifts, whether there will be a shift in the demand or supply curve. So let's start this. Consider the market for mini events. So first thing, there is a market for mini events. For each of the events listed here, identify which of the determinants of demand or supply are affected. Also indicate whether demand or supply increases or decreases. Then draw a diagram to show the effect on the price and quantity of minimums. So this question, question is asking three different things. And uh, uh, in the last part, in equilibrium analysis, uh, we discuss how we move from, uh, from process one to process three. So the, this is the similar, uh, this question is basically on that, on equilibrium analysis. So the first part is, people decide to have more children so when people decide to have more children what is going to happen to the market for minivans that that is the main question but let's discuss it one by one so for each of the events listed here identify which of the determinants of demand and supply are affected that's the first part indicate demand or supply increases or decreases second and draw a diagram that's the third so in this case people decide to have more children so in this case uh, it will have an impact on the demand of minivans not the supply so part one we have the impact will be on demand the second part says indicate whether demand or supply increases or decreases so supply is not relevant in this case demand is relevant so as people will have more children uh, the, the demand for minivans will increase so demand will increase and the third part says draw a diagram so we are just going to draw a diagram this is the demand the first demand curve d1 this is price this is quantity so when demand curve shifts uh, this will lead to a shift in the demand curve when demand increases, it will lead to a rightward shift in the demand curve. So it will move from D1 to D2. All right, so let's move on to part B of the same question. So the part B says a strike by steel workers raises steel prices. So one thing to understand here is that steel is the input for minivans so steel is used to produce minivans so there is a strike by steel workers and the price of steel has increased what will happen what will change demand or supply that's the first thing that we need to decide so in this case it's not related to demand right 
demand comes from consumers and uh, supply comes from producers. This is producer side of the uh, uh, of the effect. The effect that we are seeing is from producer side. So here we are going to uh, the relevant uh, thing is supply here. Now we have to decide whether supply will increase or decrease for minivans. So there is a strike. The steel prices have increased. So when input prices increase, the supply decreases. That's the rule that we uh, that we studied. And it's not on a, it's not a rule. It's actually logical. So when uh, the supply uh, the input prices increase, the supply has to decrease because uh, it's much more uh, it's much more expensive now to produce minivans. And uh, the third part, how to show it on the graph. This is demand. This is supply. So to show a decrease in supply, we have to shift supply curve backward. So this is supply too. The equilibrium has changed from P1, Q1, to P2, Q2. The quantity has decreased and the price has increased. Let's move on to part C. Engineers develop new automated machinery for production of vans. So is it related to demand or supply? This is related to supply. Why? Because uh, new machinery, automated machinery, has been developed by engineers. So this will not have an impact on the demand, but on the supply side. So now we have new automated machinery. What will happen? Will the supply increase or decrease? Think about it for a second. So there is a new machinery and uh, the purpose of the machinery was to increase supply, right? To make the process much more efficient, the production of vans, for the production of vans. So when there is new automated machinery, it must increase the supply of minivans. So how do we show it on the graph? This is demand, this is supply. Here we have prices, here we have quantity and uh, so to increase to show the increase in supply we have to uh, shift the supply curve downward this is supply two so this was quantity one this is quantity two now see we have shown increase in supply the quantity supplied has increased from q1 to 2q to q2 the equilibrium uh, previous equilibrium price level was p1 and the new equilibrium price level is P2. The price has decreased and the quantity has increased. The part D of the question says the price of sports utility vehicles rises. So now here we have sports utility vehicles price rise. So we have minivans on one side and on the other side we have other vehicles. So Minivans and other vehicles are substitutes. Uh, a consumer can either purchase a minivan or other vehicles. In this case, we are talking about sports uh, vehicles. So when the price of a substitute increases, what will happen to the demand for minivans? The demand for minivans will increase. So here, the first thing that we have to decide whether the demand or supply will shift. In this case, the demand will shift. The demand will increase or decrease. The demand will increase because uh, the substitutes, that is other vehicles, the price of uh, sports utility vehicles has increased. So the demand for minivans will increase in this case. And to show the impact of an increase in demand on the graph, what we have to do is, this is demand, this is supply. To show an increase in demand, we have to shift the demand curve upwards or to the right. So this was Q1, this is Q2. The demand, the quantity uh, has increased. The quantity demanded has increased. And the uh, initial equilibrium was here at, at P1. This is the initial equilibrium with price P1. This is the new equilibrium with price P2. The price has increased as the demand has increased. Now let's move on to the last part. 
the last part says a stock market crash lowers people's wealth so we have to decide whether this is relevant to demand or supply so this is related to consumers right and when things change uh, in relation to the consumers it impacts the demand so we are talking about demand here so now we have to decide whether demand will increase or decrease so there is a decrease in people's wealth right people have less money now their wealth has decreased so their demand for many vans will decrease and how do we show the impact of a lower demand on the graph this is d1 this is s1 so how do we show a decrease in demand a shift downwards or towards the left side so this is going to be d2 this is q1 and this is q2 see the quantity has decreased when we when we shift demand downwards the initial equilibrium was where here and the price was p1 here and the new equilibrium is here with price p2 the price level is decreased as well as the quantity demanded so with this we finish our examples uh, there are much more examples in the book uh, the book that i'm following is uh, is a man keeps principles of microeconomics you can uh, i'm following fifth version i'm uh, these are the questions from that version but i'm pretty sure all of these questions are also present in other versions later versions so if you have any other version uh, six seventh eighth or nine you can uh, practice these questions as well as some other questions and if you have other questions you can ask me in the comment section below all right so with this we finish our uh, our chapter demand and supply these are the initial concepts now we are, we are going to move to much more advanced concepts like elasticities and uh, that's the next uh, next chapter so for now just practice practice as much as you can shift in demands shift in supply upward shift downward shift equilibrium change these are important concepts that you you need to clear before we move on to elasticities so see you in the next lecture goodbye